Welcome back, art addicts. I also have the star of my show returning to the screen. Um, okay, so part two of our video series on how to host your own paint and sip. You have all of your supplies. You have your reference material. Now, I have on my blog um, reference material that you can download. So such a painting such as this, very simple. A figure, but not involving skin or eyeballs or <laughs> placement of noses. None of that tricky stuff. Um, also a background that's malleable. You can choose your own color background. This kind of has some Monstera pattern print in it, but you can actually change that to be any pattern print that you'd like. Maybe starfish or pineapples, very popular right now. Um, anything. Um, but today, since you have me um, teaching you, uh, we're going to kind of do something a little bit more popular, a little bit more fun. And um, if you do use this video for your party and you can teach this to somebody else, this is a really, really popular, popular piece. Van Gogh. So sunflowers. The best thing about this painting is how many of these sunflowers are dead. Nearly all of them. <laughs> and it's the best painting ever. So this is what we're going to be painting today. But like I said, I have lots of downloadable um, uh, PDFs and, and JPEGs as well that you can download. And what I've done on those is you already have a grid on your image. So instead of having to put your own grid on there, um, you can do it with a pen. It doesn't have to be done on a computer and then print it out. Um, a, a Sharpie is just fine. Either way, your reference material needs to have a grid on it. And what this does is this helps us learn to draw. Okay, this is not something you'll use forever. Eventually the grid falls away, but the grid is a great way to know what goes where. This ensures me as a teacher and you as a host that everything on the image will make it onto the canvas. If we just have a drawing free for all, the vase might be this small or this big. It might be as big as the paper. So um, this just really gives us a reference of what goes where. The first thing you're going to have your students do is take the grid that's on the painting or on the reference material, which is a four by three for this one. This one is a six by four. Um, if it was a, a portrait layout, it would be a four by six. So anything, any kind of grid, it does not matter. Anything that you even print out from Costco or Target, you can then mark up with a Sharpie pen and create your own grid. The larger the squares, um, the more difficult it is. You wanna have not too many squares because then it's too detailed and you just don't wanna get into that. It takes too long. Um, if a six by four ends up usually being perfect. Things don't get too out of whack or out of proportion. So for this one today, we're using a three by four. So you're gonna to have to create this exact grid on your canvas, just with, it, with your pencil. So here, what we have here is three quadrants going across and four quadrants going down. That's all that you need to do just with your pencil. Then we know where things go, and that's when we start drawing. When we know what, what goes where, we know that the top flower is in the middle quadrant, but a little towards the right side. We know that the vase is in the middle quadrant of the bottom of the paper here, and then it comes up into taking basically the whole quadrant here, and then coming up into the second one, ending at about midway. So this is how we're going to know what goes where. So at the end, we should have a, a drawing that looks something like this. It's not a sketch drawing. It's not something that you want to even take a picture of. It should be something that you're not proud of and that you don't even like. My rule when we're drawing is I don't want you to fall in love. You're not allowed to fall in love because that means we've taken it too far. This is just our shapes of where we're going to paint. We're going to cover this with paint, so don't, <laughs> don't fall in love because <laughs> then the class is over. <laughs> Okay, so we know what goes where. We know that um, we have all of our flowers in. You don't have to do this many flowers. Remember, this is a lot of flowers, and I'm going to do it rather quickly today just because this is a tutorial and I want we need to get through it. We don't want to be sitting here forever. Okay, so now that we've got that, you're gonna take your eraser if you're using a light colored background, and you're gonna erase a little bit of those lines that are sticking out here. Now, this is a background that's very, very light in color. Yellow, in fact. Yellow unless you add a lot of white, has a lot of transparency. So we don't want to be fighting with our background to cover these lines that we've made on our grid. Any other painting is the same way. If you have a very dark background, 
don't worry about it. Your paint will cover it. But ours won't. So if you are doing this piece and you're doing a light background, get rid of these lines. It'll just save you so much time and so much paint because you'll just end up painting, 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 trying to get rid of these lines. Okay, so good enough. We've gotten rid of our lines there. First, you're going to work from furthest in perspective to closest in perspective, no matter what painting you're doing. You're going to be painting the furthest thing back, which is our background, okay? Not our subject, which is our vase of flowers. You're going to paint the background first. What we see here is he's just created kind of a nice yellow stucco wall from that yellow house that he was living in. The, also a yellow table. Those are going to be the first things that you paint, okay? Next is the vase because that comes on top of the table, right? Then after that, the flowers. So first, second, third, flowers are fourth. The flowers also have their kind of own ecosystem going on. Some are in front of others. Some are behind others. All of the ones that are furthest back will be your first flowers that you paint, and your second ones that are in front will come afterwards. This also helps in the drying process. Our background needs to dry pretty well before we get to our flowers, but it will have that chance because we're going to be painting a table, which is really, really nice. And then we'll come to the vase, which is on top of the table, and then to the flowers, and then we can be working with a dry background and putting those flowers literally on top of our background, just as in nature. Okay, so I'm going to get started on this uh, background, and I'll see you back when the background's on. Okay, so that was my background. Another fun little tip that when you're doing this kind of thing, when people are drawing, it's so intense, and when they're painting, it's even more intense. So remind people to visit with each other, see what each other's working on, sip, cheers. Remember the sipping's optional, but it really does help get rid of a lot of self-judgment, <laughs> and that's a really good thing. I'm very in support of anything that does that. So um, a lot of times people, they have their first glass of wine. They're like, I don't care if this turns out great. I am just having fun. Um, and then they end up loving their piece because they weren't worried. You know, they weren't withholding themselves just based on their own judgments and, and fear of being bad. <laughs> so another thing that I do with my students, and you can do this too, is that I tell them, okay, we're going to do this. If for some reason we hate it, we can have a burning ceremony and we just burn them and we just forget about the whole experience and, and create a, a fun uh, element for them. Anyhow, but literally I've never had one student that ever wanted to burn their piece. So you're learning a good method. It's, it's a proven system. Okay, so for here what I used with this background was I used an arcadium yellow with a lot of white. So you create this opacity. If you just use cadmium yellow, red, blue on their own, they're very transparent. So mixing them helps them to have create or have opacity or create opacity. And that just means better coverage. You cannot see what's behind them. Down here, I use some of that ochre that we talked about. It's that neutralized yellow. It's that special yellow that came in a different tube than the yellow. This can be created with normal yellow um, with a hint of uh, red and blue to neutralize that yellow. It's not necessary um, if you want to just use the two. Um, so we did use this golden yellow at the bottom and the yellow, um, cadmium yellow with the white mixed for the top part. Now brilliantly, Van Gogh, what he did was he created the vase in the same colors as his table and his background, but he reversed them so that the bottom of the vase was the color of the wall and that the top of the vase was the color of the table. So you're going to go ahead and create that as well on your vase. And then we're going to head towards the flowers.
Now, one thing I want to reiterate is anytime you mix colors or you change colors with your brush, you're going to want to rinse it and then dab it on your paper towel. Sometimes when you're mixing, you just kind of really get into the moment and you're mixing all kinds of colors and then what's happening on here is something that's not pretty. So you want to make sure that anytime you change colors, you know, from a yellow to a yellow to a yellow, oftentimes you can use the same brush. Um, but just for, for clarity of color, you really want to make sure you're using a clean brush. Now, um, we are only using yellow so far. What we're going to start creating now is browns and, and um, reds. Now, a lot of these sunflowers have a very reddish tint because they're dead. It's the seeds that are inside that are creating this brown and, and this redness that's coming out. Now, that can be created with your red and your yellow and your blue. So like always, we're trying to use the primary colors as much as possible because that creates a lot of vibrancy in your colors and in your art. So we're going to take mostly yellow. Um, if you add a little bit of red to the yellow, you get an orange. And that's very, very nice. We're going to have to add a little bit of white for opacity, of course. We need to have good coverage. To create that into a brown, we're going to add a little bit of blue. Just a little bit. And then we get this really nice brown color. This is also how you make skin, using all red, yellow, and blue. But we'll do that later. Now, continuing to add the different colors until you find a brown that you like. I like that one. We're going to take it up to one of our darkest bulbs up here. And we're going to be kind of rather messy. This thing is dead. It's very stringy. It's got seeds and it's got little fuzz hanging out like it's having a bad hair day. You want to create your darkest color first, okay? So um, what we were talking about was filling in the darkest parts of the flower first. Now that means the brown parts. We can come in later on when that's dry and come in with these nice light speckled areas. So if you have this in front of you, or if you print out this, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's nice light colors of light yellow, light brown um, within those flowers, kind of showing some texture, and that's gonna be necessary. But until texture can be shown, the ground has to be covered first. So that's what we're working on. So go ahead and finish this. Continue on with these flowers, you know, adding all the brown in, um, adding in the lighter yellow flowers, always working from back to front. Um, don't worry about any of these little areas of highlights where the blue line streaks across the horizon, where the red and blue and then the Vincent are written late, that will come last. Those are the final details that happen. Another final detail are the leaves, the green leaves and the yellow petals. Right now we're just working with the centers of the flowers. So go ahead and get in all of your centers that you know are the furthest back and then we'll work from there. I'm going to continue painting. I'll speed up the movie, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, this looks nothing like it's supposed to. I know, it's going to come along. But you have to have the groundwork done first, which means the under part of the flowers. That's just browns and yellows and reds, okay? Now I'm going to put in the green stems. Green is made with blue and yellow. 
So we're going to take our blue, add a little bit of our yellow. And remember, you can always just use your two green if you'd like. No harm in that. Especially if this is one of your first paintings. Go for it. Why not? Okay, so we have our green. I'm just going to trace out where my stems are going to go. I need to make sure that none of my flowers are floating in space. Okay, so I've done most of my green areas. The greens are the leaves that are under the flowers. So we have these back leaves, which are the green ones that kind of poke out every once in a while and you can see them here and there, but they're not really the real petals of the flower. The petals of the flower are your yellows. So that's gonna be your cadmium yellow, even some of your ochre yellow, mix it a little bit of white. Those are the princess flowers, the ones that come forward, the princess petals, the ones that come forward. So sometimes you might have to just let your painting dry a little bit from here. We can go back and do those kind of fine touches of those reds and blues now that we know that our background is dry. We know that he traced the outline of his vase in red on the side here. And on the other side. We know that he traced the rest in blue. So I'm changing from red to blue. So rinse my brush. Always a clean brush. Especially when changing like that. Otherwise I'd have a version of purple, which you might like if you want purple. Keep your brush. Um, so I'm moving into blue now. Keeping a nice broken line like he did. Nothing too solid. Keeping the shape of the vase in a curve, natural towards something coming towards you. You can write Vincent there or you don't have to. Um, that's just where he signed it. So if you would like to do the same thing, that's where you could put your signature. And what I tell my students is just put like your initials or your name and just put after Vincent. So I would be KK after Vincent, um, just so we can give him some, some credit for being the master that he was. So from here, you're just gonna continue. Once this dries and all the dark parts are dry, you're gonna come in with your lighter colors, your lighter yellows um, mixed in with a lot of white and you're going to be able to create texture. And this is where you can really dab and dabble. You're going to get to dab, 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 And you're going to create kind of a little bit more texture than that's what's really, really going on in these flowers. Vincent was huge on texture. As you know, he had layers and layers and layers of paint. I'm going to go back and forth with dark colors and light colors, and then just kind of bring these big flowers to life. So going back and forth, light colors, dark colors, light colors, dark colors, trying never to blend with your brush. Keep your brush touching your canvas and then releasing from your canvas, that canvas and then touching in another area. And this will help your strokes to not blend. So we're gonna continue on this um, same path um, of going around and creating texture in all of these flowers. And then next we'll put the petals on, okay? Okay, so now we're working on the petals. What Van Gogh did was he painted yellow petals of yellow flowers on a yellow background. The only way that that can work without just a yellow canvas entirely, you call it yellow flowers, is that you have to outline those different aspects of yellow. So if you look closely at your, at your reference material, you will see that there are little brown and red outlines of the different petals that he has that are close to anything yellow behind it. And what this helps to do is separate and show the viewer there is something here. There is a petal here. It is yellow. Same color as the background. 
but I'm going to outline it a little bit for you. You'll see a lot of this in a lot of his work, and we will do um, a tutorial on how to paint a Starry Night, which is a fabulous, famous painting, um, but those nice broken strokes um, are what give Van Gogh his style. So in this style, um, not so much broken, there are broken strokes, but it's really all about color and painting the same color upon a same background. It's very, very amazing. Um, but what you need to do is take a smaller brush, not quite a signature brush, but something with, with a small, you can kind of see it's a very small round tip. Um, it is a round and it's small, a point. Um, and you're just gonna go around with these different areas and kind of highlight, bring, bring out those, show that there's a petal there because there might be a petal on top of the background, which is a very similar color, and you can help bring that up. What that will do is help to create more dimension for your viewer. And your viewer will say, oh, there's a petal sitting there. They won't necessarily know that you just did that by creating a shadow shape under that shape of a petal, but they will know that it's a petal. So that's the aim that you're going for. Continue that around on all of your little areas here and there, not exactly tracing out every petal, Okay, try to be spontaneous, a little here, a little there, just showing some shadow shapes, um, and that will help to bring those petals forward. Your viewer's brain will do the rest. It's very impressionistic. And then you're ready to sign. So remember, at this step, you're always painting from, from the furthest in perspective to the closest in perspective. So we're always working on those flowers that are behind, and then making sure that those flowers that are in front get painted last because then that paint will literally be on top of the other paint, just as we see in real life. Okay, so hopefully you get as far as you can in the three hours. Like I said, you can negate some flowers. Some of these flowers, they're not really important to the whole of the story. The story is definitely there, minus three or four flowers. You can always just paint your favorite ones. Um, if you have any questions, please post comments below and um, please tell me how it goes because I love hearing how your guys' um, events go, especially after having a tutorial like this and really just going for it. Um, and you have instructions, so you trust in what you know now, which is fantastic. On my blog, again, there is um, all of this instruction in written form. If you want to print that out for yourself, there's also uh, downloads for images should your students want to do a different image if they don't bring their own. Um, and I think that's it. Please, again, let me know how it goes. I'm very, very excited for you. Um, hashtag Art Addict, and um, I'll see you in our next video. Aloha!